Um, this is a little project I worked on last weekend, and it's a signal generator, a little signal generator, using one of the little DDS modules that you can get pretty cheap off of eBay and AliExpress and Amazon, etc. And this one uses the AD9833, and it um, that module will generate up to a 12 megahertz signal. Um, they cost eh, anywhere from uh, about $4 up to about 6 to $8. Um, I got mine off of Amazon for about $6. So um, I have it in a little project box now that I've 3D printed. Um, I have a max, oh, I think it's a 7819 um, display in here. It's one of the little serial displays. Um, or SPI displays, and I am running it off of uh, STCW, or excuse me, 15W404, um, which is a 8051 core processor out of China. You'll see a lot of the STC processors and a lot of the kits you see out on eBay and Alley, um, but they're 8051 cored. Um, when I did some embedded stuff back um, and early in my career, um, I was doing 8051 and Z80. So the, I guess the only microprocessor at the time I was using was an 8051 core. Um, so got to where I like them. Um, and they're easy to work with. Um, there are things about them that are not as good as, you know, the newer processors. And then there's things that are, they're better. Um, the STC processors are... Our cord is 8051, but they um, they have some extra features for I.O. lines. Um, they do interrupts really, really fast, um, extremely fast. Um, they make at mega eights look pretty slow um, in, to, in that respect. But anyway, not not here to 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 change anybody's processor views. But anyway, that's what I have in here. And um, but this is it. This is. It's just little, small. I've got your output here, and I've um, got a regulator, a buck, a, a, a buck regulator in here. So I'm running off of um, about six volts. So anyway, um, this will do sine waves, triangle waves, and square waves. Um, and like I said before, it will do 12 megahertz, but I have it limited here. Um, I have six digits so you can go up to in theory to one megahertz um, then you have a digit for on off right here and then this is your um, digit to change your wave so what I wanted to do is something that was simple um, to use easy not a lot of buttons um, so um, the cursor is denoted by the decimal because there's no decimal um, this was kind of reminiscent to the old wheeled um, signal generators you had where you'd set each individual digit into frequency um, as thing you know there so your your decimal will be implied based on where it's at right? so anyway um, you use the button to um, navigate so get here and so first we'll change the wave a sine wave right there. That is a square wave and that's a triangle. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, we'll do it as a sine wave. So keep it there. We'll go back and let's do a 10K wave. And let's see if we can get the scope going. And there we go. We've got a 10, well, 10K on the nose. So sine wave. Um, but you can see the frequency down here and it's hardware frequency there and there's your software frequency so um we can change it the way i have it set you're stuck in your um on off um until you change it to what i call the no op and then no op is the one in the middle so it lets you go on so let's change it to a triangle wave and you have to go back in one direction so it's it's um it's um just you know click until you get there so um there you have your triangle wave and 10 um and this this um the 80 um 
9833 um, is pretty stable um, in the, um, a few hundred K um, for, for all the waves. When you get past, uh, if I remember right, around 400 or so, it kind of gets kind of jittery. Um, now on the square wave, you will get a 5 volt square wave. Um, like right here, if you noticed, that's, my divisions is set to 200 millivolts. And that'll be the same for triangle or um, sine waves. So it's really small voltage out for for that now for your square waves it is five so let's go change this to square there we go square and there we go get the auto there and we have our square and see it settles back down to 10k so we've got two volts per division so change that to five so we got five right on the nose so um so really good with that um and now let's do this um let's keep it at square um go to one twenty five excuse me twelve Okay, so it has 12, 5, so really stable there. So now what we're going to do is bump this up to 5, 12, 500. And now, and now you see the jitter. So um, now if we back this down to let's see we'll go to three and now it's pretty stable at three all right it's fairly stable at three good good you know a, a decent um square wave um sine wave change it and now millivolts I'm mean, down in the millivolts so not bad there on the sine wave um, and this triangle will be the same I need to I need to change my debounce in the um, encoder switch. Um, it goes a little fast. I actually have it. I just need to recompile it um, and put it on the controller. But anyway, see there, it's pretty stable. It is at three one two five zero eight. So a little bit of drift there. So that's three one two. What we have it set for five hundred. So five zero eight. Um, and if I hook it up to my frequency counter, I have a leader. 80 megahertz frequency counter it, it'll read pretty much the same as this it it'll actually read it probably a little lower but not by much um so anyway um let's bump it up again if i remember right the triangle and the the sine wave go jittery before the square wave but i might be wrong Still, yeah, you're getting some movement there and yeah, some noise here and there. Um, yeah, it, it is, it is, yeah, you can see it there. Yeah, you can see it there. It's a little more jittery there. But the square wave, up until around 450 or so, it's fairly stable. But um, that being said, for what I wanted it for is I want to I wanted it something that can generate square waves um, in a higher frequency than a 555 can um, a normal 555 anyway and I could set easily with um, um, something in 
you know, an interface, simple interface, and I didn't want a lot of buttons or anything, and the encoder button, I mean, you have to go click, 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 click to get to the next one, and but it doesn't take that long. And, um, didn't take that many, many IOs to do it, and it's in a really small container here, so, like I said, I 3D printed this, and, um, the processor itself is, a controller is, it's really small too. And, um, um, what I would like to do is a, like a little sweep generator. Um, I've been watching um, Emson Guy's channel and he was doing one and um, he actually, you know, explained one and it made sense it's like oh yeah i could do that but i'll have to i'll definitely have to put some more buttons on on this and i'll do another version so i may do it in a with a pick processor or something this time but just keep it different i'm i'm not a big atmel person i mean i use them and play with them but yeah i just like other things don't want to get stuck in the crowd <laughs> which is fine it's fine but anyway um like i said this is a little quick video and um um, I'll have the schematics and the code out on out on the web. Thanks a lot.